Hi, I'm going to show you how to predict the sign on S, on delta S entropy. Uh, so just a little reminder of the signs for delta S. Uh, we have a negative, that means not spontaneous, and that's code for going from disorder to order. So the system is becoming more organized. Anytime we're creating more organization, more order, it takes energy, so that's not spontaneous. So anything that's becoming more ordered, more organized, negative delta S. Um, now positive delta S, that's spontaneous. It will happen by itself. And this is going from order to disorder. Also true in life. Um, you don't have to work for things to fall apart. They fall apart by themselves. Um, so anytime something goes from an ordered state to a more disordered state, so notice it's more disordered, spontaneous, it is a positive delta S. Um, now keep delta S straight. Um, in comparison to delta G and delta H because their signs are just opposite. I call delta S the odd man out um, and you really have to have that memorized that non-spontaneous is negative, spontaneous is positive. Um, so you could be given um, some questions of predict the sign. Is the system becoming more or less ordered? Um, and then give the negative delta S or the positive delta S. So here are five ways to predict. I'm going to give you some examples with this. Um, phase changes. Notice that entropy is going to increase, which means we have more disorder. In fact, I'm going to write that down. Um, when we say um, entropy uh, increases, that's code for uh, more disorder. Just a little bit of jargon for you um, so that you know how to interpret that. So if I have more entropy, I have more disorder. Um, so our entropy is a measure of disorder. Okay. As we're going from a solid to a liquid to aqueous to gas, that is increasing entropy, becoming more disorganized. I mean, it's super easy to see from a solid that's in an organized fixed position to gas that's 100% random. Um, it, I call them maniacs, disorganized, moving um, individually um, on their own paths. You can see that the disorganization increases. Now, aqueous is more disorganized than liquid. Um, because you're going to have an ion surrounded by water, which means ultimately at the very root, uh, there are more ways where energy packets can distribute. And I tell my students, think about the ways that collision can happen. Simply because you have um, a liquid with a salt that's been dissolved, um, you're going to have more options of how um, particles can collide, which means more options of how energy can transfer, this dispersal of energy. So here's an example for you. Um, notice we're going from ammonia gas and we're going to dissolve it in water to make it ammonia aqueous. Um, so we want to know, is it going from order to disorder, disorder to order? This is literally what I'll have my students um, do. I'll have them write down O for order and DO for disorder. So for example, right here, I go DO to O. Uh, so we're going from, this is going to be more disorder to more order. So disorder to order, um, we're going from the grass, gas to aqueous, it's becoming more organized. And then I think, okay, disorder to order that's more organized definitely requires energy, it doesn't happen naturally, not spontaneous, and so that sign is a negative delta S. Okay, negative delta S requires energy. I want to put that in parentheses. This is going to require energy, energy, okay. Um, let's look at our second example. Anytime you increase the number of particles, you increase entropy. And it goes back to that idea, the more particles you have that can collide, the more options of how energy can disperse. And the more options for energy to disperse, um, the greater the entropy, the greater the disorder. Um, so if you increase number of particles, increase disorder, entropy. So I want to give you two examples on this. Um, this first one, we have a calcium carbonate, which is solid, yield, um, carbon dioxide gas, and calcium uh, oxide solid. Here you're counting number of particles. So notice I have one mole total and over here I have one, two, two moles. This is a decomposition reaction. I'm going from one substance to two substances. It's easy to see, oh, if I start with one reactant but I end with two products, there are more options and ways to disperse that energy for um, these molecules to, um, or these compounds to collide. Uh, so this is going to be an increase in disorder. So notice I would write this is more ordered and it's going to disorder. Okay, order to disorder, everything naturally falls apart. That's spontaneous, so this is going to be a positive delta S. Now, some of you may have looked at this and said, wait a second, the phases also change. 
Um, so I have my solid going to a gas in the solid. That also will show us, oh, there's more disorder because I'm going from one solid to a solid and a gas. So also by looking at phases is going to increase the disorder. Um, let's see, if you had just the opposite, like if we had um, two going into one, disorder going into order, you know, like if this is reversed, you'd still find the same thing. If you ever find competing, like, well, the phases look like more disorder, but the number of molecules looks like more order, um, you're going to have to use your, your best judgment of which one will trump, of which one would be more uh, more power, uh, more impacting on the disorder. And you can do that. You can figure it out. Unlikely that a professor would give you something where you have competing ideas. Um, Okay, check out this one. So they're all gas phases. We're going from two compounds for the reactant to one compound for the product. So this is a synthesis reaction. In this, because I've got two moles, and over here we've only got one mole, that means I'm going from disorder to more organized. So I'm going from two into one, forcing this to become more organized. Well, disorder to order requires energy, non-spontaneous, that is going to be a negative delta S, negative delta S. Okay, number three, if you increase the volume for gases, you increase the entropy. And again, it's because you're just gonna have more options of how that energy can distribute. Um, so I gave an example here that we have nitrogen gas in a one liter container, and now I'm going to change that to a two liter container. And I want to know which one's going to have more entropy. Well, when you increase volume, you increase entropy. So in essence, we'd be going from more organized at only one liter to more disorder um, with two liters. So order to disorder, things going from um, organization to disorder naturally happens, spontaneous. So that's going to be a positive delta S. Okay, number four, as we increase the temperature, which is an increase in kinetic energy, it also increases the, ent the entropy. The disorder. Um, and this makes sense as you add energy, okay, so as we increase the temperature, it's going to increase the dispersal of the energy. And dispersing energy, that's really the disorder, um, how we spread out energy. We disperse that energy is through disorder. Um, or maybe I should say it creates disorder. Let's see here. So I have an example for you. Let's say that we have um, water at 25 degrees C and we're going to heat this to 50 degrees C. So I'm putting energy into this. You're going to have more movement of the molecules, so um, there's going to be an increase in dispersing this energy. So we're going to end up going from more order to more disorder. And again, order to disorder spontaneously happens, um, so that's going to be a positive of us. Okay, so increased temperature, increased disorder. That one really makes sense. Um, all right, increase the molar mass, you're going to increase the entropy. Um, and for this, I want you to think surface area. The bigger the molar mass, it really means the larger the molecule, and the larger the compound. And the larger the compound, um, there's going to be a greater surface area. If there's greater surface area, greater chance that atoms or these compounds could collide and disperse energy. Uh, so that's kind of the root on that. Um, so your big takeaway, if you're given um, a set of just compounds, um, simply look at the molar masses, add up the molar masses, and the largest one will have the greatest entropy because greatest ability to disperse energy. Um, so if we take uh, carbon dioxide, which is going to be 44.01 grams per mole, and water is 18.02 grams per mole, notice they're at the same temperature. Um, I want to know which compound inherently is going to have more disorder is the larger one. Um, so I would say that the CO2 has greater entropy, the delta S, um, than the H2O. There's greater disorder for the larger molar mass. Okay, so that should help you. Great, um, especially multiple choice questions from a teacher that you can predict the sign on delta S. Good work, you're doing great. If you need more help, check out the playlist on um, entropy and free energy. All right, have a good day, thanks.